bumper to bumper, we love them old cars. Sam, good day and welcome to Bumper to Bumper. How are you going? Yeah, good, Rusty. Now, you're from Showfront. That's We're right. talking, and what, do, what does Showfront do? Now, uh, Showfront, we make uh, showcases and display cabinets. Um, we deliver them all around the country. Um, and we service a lot of different markets and industries and uh, um, everything from retail to um, museums, uh, schools, government departments and uh, collectors. Now, how long have Showfront been in business for? We've been in business for over 25 years, making display cases uh, and showcases. Um, we've operated out of Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. Terrific. Now today you've actually brought me to a collector and this is not just your everyday collector but this is a per person who actually has a, a deep passion for all types of models. That's right, that's right Rusty. Um, you know we're, we're lucky uh, that we get to meet some uh, fantastic people along the way and uh, uh, brought you to Colin's place. Um, Colin is an old customer of uh, Showfronts. Um, who has an incredible passion for uh, collecting models, making models, um, and uh, we'll show you in a moment. But uh, Colin has been collecting for a number of years um, and has an incredible range of, of models. Uh, he came to us a few years ago. Um, the range wasn't as big as what it is now. It's obviously grown um, with, with quite a specific uh, request um, in regards to what he wanted, um, quite particular with what he wanted, and we were able to design uh, a range of cabinets that, that suited his collection um, and also suited uh, his home um, and room where he was going to put the cabinets in. So one of the beauties about Showfront is that you actually do manufacture but you custom make as well. And I think that's integral because obviously each customer's requirements is different and Later when we go and speak to Colin, you'll notice how different and how specific this is because this is one unique design. Absolutely. Customisation is very important. Um, you know, m most of the cabinets we make uh, are a little bit different um, and are designed to suit particular needs and customer needs. Um, so we're not just a, an out-of-the-box cabinet maker, um, showcase manufacturer, we will customise and build our cabinets to your requirements. A and Colin is a perfect example of, uh, of what we've been able to, to do and assist him in displaying his collection. Well, I can't wait to uh, take everyone from bumper to bumper around to see Colin's collection because it is just massive and it's displayed so professionally and the display cases look fantastic. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Likewise, mate. All right. Thank you. Thank you. OK, see you, Sam. Thank you. OK, Colin, g'day and welcome to Bumper to Bumper. How are you going? Steve, pleased to meet you and welcome to my collection. Well, it's a, let me say, first of all, it, I'm very pleased to meet you mm. and I've just had a quick look around at your collection and it's fantastic. But before we get into that, what started you off collecting in the first place and how old were you? I was in my teens and my father introduced me to model building with aircraft because he had an interest in that. Yeah. It developed from there but uh, when truck models came along in the 70s I drifted over to that because I'd lived in a family earning its living from a truck Yeah. and uh, it was a natural progression so I was involved in watching Caterpillar machinery working around the truck and the collection is based around all of that. Alright, so what are the main themes of your collection? Truck building is mainly in model building. You start with a basic kit, modify, scratch build, do what you can to make what you would like to appear on the shelves. Uh, since I've retired, I've drifted into uh, collecting because there's a lot of stuff I won't have the time to build and it's not available in kits, but there's some spectacular collectibles around and I wanted to uh, make a collection that uh, was worth enjoying and uh, for friends and other modelers to see. All right. Now, the range of uh, products on display here, you've got planes, you've got trucks, and you've got um, plant equipment as well. Can you tell me just about why you've gone down this direction and these types of things? Obviously, it's an interest to you. Well, it was a, a normal background, I suppose, with my parents owning out of trucks, so trucks became an interest. Uh, the machinery, the Caterpillar machinery particularly, was an interest. But I was also interested in aircraft and I followed a career in the aviation industry. 
So uh, I've got a little bit of a you know, trial down memory lane with the collection I've put together through, from older aircraft through to current stuff. But uh, I don't build aircraft to the same degree that I chase the trucks. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with what I've got and uh, it's a good cross-section of everything that's interested me along the way. And that's most important because if you, you've got an interest in something then obviously you'll collect that and put that in display case. Mm. How many items do you actually have in total? Uh, on display here at the moment I think it's about 1,600 according to my databases. Now, you are very particular about your, not only model making, mm -hmm. but also about the cataloguing of the models you actually have too, so take us through that. Well, it's uh, fairly important. Some models are fairly cheap and uh, mass produced and others are extremely rare and uh, some there, like that cabinet, uh, only a few hundred in the world and uh, have been made for special collections, limited edition. So, because they're very valuable, I've got to keep track of it. and. Uh, and my family needs to know those sort of important things too, but uh, they don't sell a very expensive thing for a cheap price. All right. Mm. Now, you make a lot of the models yourself. Why have you gone down that track? Because obviously mm. you, you like to tinker and, 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 yeah. and customise as well. Yeah, the, uh, that's the challenge of uh, see something you'd like to make or I identify, a, a uh, say, a vacancy in my collection, <laughs> especially the trucks, and think something good would come out of that. So I'll start planning on it, the thought bubble starts and uh, you work towards it and then they acquire the appropriate kits and the aftermarket components. There's some very good suppliers. I deal with Oslo model accessories extensively because these his, uh, uh, products are ex excellent. Yeah. So I've utilised those a lot and uh, that helps to transform a basic kit into something special that you want it to be. And uh, so I follow through from there. and. Uh, once one is finished, you have a little spell for a while and then a, a new seed will sort of germinate in the mind and uh, you'll go down another path with another challenge. Now, some people might see this as a sickness, but I see it as a passion. Yeah. How often, how long would it actually take you to actually build a normal model? It depends how much time you can put into it. Now that I'm retired, I can sometimes spend six, eight, ten hours a day when, uh, when I really get going. but. Sometimes it might get left for a while. There's a couple of models here I've taken a year to build, but that means I had a couple of months off in the meantime. Yeah. So it does vary. I don't like catalogue hours done. Oh, I thought you might there, Colin. No, no, I'm not that far <laughs> into it. No, but uh, some of them I can knock over in a few months, but that's a spare time sort of a hobby. That's not a priority. But uh, some take longer and some are easier. So it varies a lot. All right, now... Once we go through the display and show people at home you know, the display cases you actually have and the models you have, you've actually um, displayed them in, in sequence as well as scale model and also the uh, type and, and manufacturer, is that correct? Yeah, I've tried to um, keep things in perspective and my primary aim was to display them in their scales so everything looks correct in respect to its neighbour. When you mix scales it gets out of proportion and looks a little bit mixed. So I've tried to expand into that, but uh, some of the aircraft models, I've put them in chronological order, older aircraft sequencing through to current day. Yes. And uh, some of those I, I worked with in, to a degree. Uh, the um, other collections like the Caterpillar collection, uh, it's a little bit all over the place because some of the, uh, the scale, some are old, some are new. So that, that does vary. The, uh, the trains are uh, what interested me you know, down when I was younger. Some we've travelled on and then some are the more modern types that are around. So it flows through into, into a, degree of, a degree of logic. All right. Now some of the other things you've actually done is made signs up yourself for these particular things and I suppose with the mm. software packages out there now it's made a lot more easier for you as well? Yeah, I've done, uh, I've acquired a, uh, a an Alps D and decal printer and uh, it's superseded technology now but I've acquired sufficient inks and I can uh, I enjoy making some of my own decals. I'm not into it commercially as some are making you know, very extensive uh, decal uh, selections but I do the small stuff for my own uh, models to uh, enhance them. And when you mean enhance them you mean by obviously to make the, the actual truck or, or whatever uh, better but also that the, the decal itself can actually then, you can customise that to suit whatever you want for sure. every model because you've actually brought um, a range of different, let's say talk trucks only, mm. 
specific to trucks that you've seen that you like? Yeah, that's where the interest lies. Something uh, as you see, see a real one on the road and say, I can make one along that line. Might not be exact, but uh, you can make one there and you can customise it. Even if I use a fictitious name on the door, I can customise that. Uh, I've put a mural on a few where I can import a picture, turn it into a water slide decal and enhance the thing there. But especially the very small writing, I can get decals down to one millimetre and still be readable. Yeah. So those small details actually improve a model no end. You're just so passionate about this, it's unbelievable, because obviously mm. not only making the models and displaying them, but actually you know that finite work that's required to really finish off a truck, I suppose, as well. Bumper to bumper, we love them old cars. Now, let's, let's talk about the actual house we're in. This is just your normal residence of home. Mm -hmm. Now, you've done some suspicious... I'll get that right, folks. Some suspicious... Specific. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. <laughs> Work on this home. Yes, yeah, I, we built a, uh, a home about 05 in our last place, and uh, the deal with my wife was the rumpus room was mine, and I had a very... Um, eclectic collection of um, model cabinets, some second hand and a couple built. They were a bit of a, uh, a mixture. Yeah. So as we got settled into that house, I, I eyed off this situation. I thought, I've got to get these models shown up in a better light. So uh, a, little bit, a little bit of research work pointed me towards Showfront. And uh, I went along and had to talk to, there, talk to them. And uh, Michael was uh, very passionate about the idea of uh, supplying what I'd like in a customised form. I didn't, couldn't go above two metres high to get through doors. I didn't yeah. want storage space at the bottom. I wanted maximum shelf space. Yeah, okay. And also very specific shelf spacings to fit models. So some of them are pretty close to the, to the limit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they were helpful at every point and uh, all the different styles of how they do it. And we settled on the, the design you see here. So uh, they were perfect. They supplied and delivered to our other house and then um, after a while we decided on a uh, change of scenery and leave suburbia into a more leisurely lifestyle. We uh, searched out and found a house that could be modified or extended to uh, accommodate what I would like my collection to be become. So this is an extension on the house. We put eight metres on the back of this place. You wanted ten? I wanted ten, <laughs> but I was only allowed eight. <laughs> Eight's um, pretty big, though. <laughs> yeah, so uh, then became the, uh, the problem of moving stuff. So a good friend and I hired a uh, high ace van and we did multiple trips up and down the road because I repacked everything I could into boxes and yeah. protected all my models, parked them out in that other room. And uh, when our moves of house, the furniture removalists expressed a very strong nervousness about handling glass cabinets. And how many did you have? There were eight of the show front ones in the first house. Eight, you know, eight by two metres long by about two metres high. They vary, a couple, a couple are smaller than that, but some are yeah. big, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went back to Michael and uh, he said the show front team would gladly uh, move them for me and they said they actually preferred to do that, which uh, really got me enthusiastic. Yeah. And they first said, because we're vacating one house before this was finished, they, uh, see Michael suggested but they'd take them back to the factory and refurbish them to their new designs. So they did that, took them all back to the factory, held them all over. I'd done a lot of design work on this room and I worked out there was room for seven more cabinets. So uh, I asked them, could they do that? So they pulled all the specifications out of their archives and uh, built uh, seven more to the sizes I, uh, I wanted to fit this room. So uh, eventually, when uh, time came to move, they delivered all of them and set them up for me. It was just brilliant work. And you actually, um, when you had them refurbish the existing ones you have, yeah. incorporated new technology into the, the um, display cases as well. Yeah, they uh, changed all the halogen lights into LEDs, which are brilliant. Yeah. They've added the strip lighting down the sides, which really gets more illumination into the lower shelves. Yes. And the um, metal strips on the edge of the glass doors is much easier to operate than uh, than the straight finger grips because the glass doors are very heavy. And you've been very meticulous about this, haven't you? We designed it carefully. I wanted to get it uh, so it would enhance the models perfectly. Yeah. 
Uh, I've got a bit more room between the cabinets than I had at the previous house, so it gives you better viewing. And uh, we got it all all done the way we wanted it. The, uh, to make it easier for showfront team to deliver, I had the builder leave a, a large panel out of the side wall beside the driveway, yeah. and the, um, the carpenters put a drawbridge in, and everything came in through the side wall. So uh, when all the cabinets were in, they were, came in in sequence, so to minimise, you know, shunting. Yes. And uh, um, we're speaking of trains, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes, exactly. <laughs> And the, uh, the builders then put the panel in the wall, the plaster and paint to finish the room off. So I've taken photos of that, so should the cabinets have to come out when I'm no longer on the scene, then whoever's got to do that job can do it relatively easily. Unbelievable, just the, the amount of um, thought that you've gone into to just have this room to display to the maximum benefit of the models itself is the credit to yourself. Thank you. It uh, was what I wanted to achieve, and I'm really pleased that I have achieved it. And it's no sure. It's really uh, important that Showfront's products have really done the job. The, they've enhanced everything, and the illumination of the cabinets has sets them off to the best of degree. And uh, I'm, I'm just wrapped in it, to be put it honestly. And I get a real buzz out of other modellers and people who are interested, as like yourself to see things like this shown in, in the best possible light. A lot of them are fairly rare and uh, they're uh, not that common to come across, so you don't see them that often. You know, most of these in the Caterpillar collection are mass produced, but there's a limited edition one is there. Yeah. And there's only a few hundred in the world, so it sort of makes them fairly special. Yeah, absolutely. So I feel pretty good. Uh, well, good. I'm glad that you feel good because mm -hmm. it, it is a passion and you do it because you love it. That's the most important thing, oh, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, like every modeler does too. Yeah. Now, one other thing I wanted to ask you about, this passion of yours, how does it sit with the wife? She tolerates it. I'm, <laughs> I'm allowed to do what I like in this room, but I don't think I'm allowed to put a cabinet out in the other room. No? Yeah, but our previous house, because we'd agreed on me having the rumpus room, it really restricted the rest of the house. So that's why we chose to do the extension on this place so I had my corner of the world yeah. that didn't sort of impose on the rest of the house. So it's still a house livable with family and visitors without uh, sort of having this sort of getting in the way all the time. Yeah. So, and plus, if it was like that, my display wouldn't be shown off to the best advantage if it was sort of here and there and yeah, in the hallways. Yeah, no, very true, actually, very yeah, true. So by having a specific custom-designed room, it gives it the best possibility. So we've achieved that. No, you have it. You have in spades. Colin, I want to say thank you very much for being on Bumper to Bumper. Thank you, Rusty. This is one impressive display room of your models that you've built and brought yourself. So well done. Thank you very much. I really enjoy it and I'm happy to share it. Terrific. Thank you. Bumper to Bumper, we love them old cars.